Oh, hello. I've been studying my book on peonies. It's just a short book, only 400 pages. <laughs> First, first up, I'm going to blatantly ask for people, if you're watching this, to please join my YouTube channel. Please hit the sus subscribe button. The reason that I'm asking this front out, you know, blatantly, is because the data has come in that 80% of people who watch my videos do not subscribe. That's a lot of people. It turns out to be a real lot of people. And it costs you nothing and it just helps my ability to be seen on YouTube. It doesn't put any money in my pocket in any way, so that's not what it's about. But what it does allow is it makes uh, searchability better. So if you can find it within your heart right now to hit that subscribe button, uh, please do it. And now we'll go on with the rest of the video. It is getting very close to peony time. And this is when I paint peonies like a crazy person for about a month. So let's take a look at what's on my bedside table. I imagine this is not on your bedside table. Here's what it is. This book about peonies. Holy smokes. Hardcover. Oh, let's see. Oh, only about 400 pages. No, no, I'm not obsessive at all. Nothing obsessive about this. <laughs> Great plates of pictures. And the amazing thing is the peonies are so varied that you really can have a 400 page book on, on them. Uh, really a remarkable thing. Now, of course, because of where I live, there are only certain varieties that are going to grow around here. So I don't have the whole world of peonies. For example, tree peonies, I know that's a whole nother subset. That can't happen here in Vermont. In the meantime, as you've probably seen, this is how I get through the year with my very fake peonies, uh, or as I like to call them, imposters. And I get these from petals.com that you can buy them individually or you can get them in this kind of arrangement with the fake water in them. <laughs> and it fools me and everybody else that comes in here. So you can have peonies full time. But as we all know, in real life, they last for a very, very short time. Although I do know there are ways to force them in your refrigerator so that uh, you can keep them going over a, a much longer season than the way they, they appear naturally. So I'm going to insert some wonderful footage here. It is not of peonies, but I want to kind of build up the anticipation. So this is my garden as the peonies are coming up. And you'll see them. They're coming up through the peony cages. They almost look a little bit like red celery at this point. But it, it's very exciting. And they, and they definitely grow like about this much every night. I don't know how they do it, but they are tremendous forces of nature. So I'm going to roll that wonderful peony. Not pre peony footage and of course when the garden comes in full bloom then uh, I'll show that and then we'll come back and talk about some topics. This is the view from my front door and Henry likes to Henry the rescue collie there he goes he'll be right back he likes to rush out of doors I don't know what that's about but he it's a uh, always an opportunity to be rushing so here are the peonies it's a variety of things in this garden but the red stocky things those are the peonies and they're coming up. I buy peony cages for them. It's just a perfect tool so that when the peonies come up and the blooms are on them and then they get heavy, I don't have to stake everything up. So it's a worthwhile investment to buy a peony cage. There's a good picture, shot of one there. There's another peony there. There, I haven't counted how many I have, but I'm guessing I probably have maybe 20 of them, all different varieties, different colors, and they will bloom around, let's see, right around June, the uh, end of May, beginning of June. Of course, this year it might be, even be a little bit earlier. There's my studio from the outside. I thought you might want to see that. I'm sorry for that swooping there. I wanted to make sure that uh, Mr. Mr. Henry was with me. Now we go into the backyard. It's nice forsythia that's in bloom. This is where, <laughs> come on, Henry. There we go. Oh, changed his mind. That's a Henry for you. Uh, the back yard doesn't get as much light, so the peonies back here are much slower, I, and I want to show you a sculpture that my grandmother made for me. It's called The Reader. Uh, I need, I'm trying to find a stand or some way to display it in the garden. That's a temporary thing, but uh, she was a very talented woman. I hope you enjoyed that pre-peony footage. <laughs> And then I wanted to talk about a couple of, of topics. One of them is I found a 
television show that is just super fun. It's on Hulu. I don't think it's available anywhere else that I know of. And it's called Making It. And it is a show where crafters, about 10 crafters are brought together and they're given different assignments of things to do. Very similar to the Great British Bake Off or any one of those voting off shows, except it's a very pleasant show, um, as, is, as, is, as is the British Baking Show. But people help each other and they're so creative. Uh, I like to watch it because I like to see what they come up with and I try to imagine how would I, how would I solve whatever the, uh, the challenge is. But it really is a lot of fun. Each episode is about 40 minutes. Next thing I wanted to talk about is I'm so, so grateful because uh, a, a, a painting friend of mine, someone that I feel very bonded to, uh, was going through some diagnostic stuff and it turned out that uh, she's going to be just fine and I'm just so thrilled about that. And I wanted to share because, you know, I know on this channel sometimes I've shared some less than happy news, but this was really good news and uh, I wanted to share it. I'm so thankful that she shared it with me as soon as she found out because my heart was... Uh, was a little a flutter. So you know who you are and thank you for sharing the good news. You know, I'm always reminded that you, you, you have to remember to share good news with people, not just bad news. Yeah, as soon as bad news happens, I'm like, raise the red flag, you know, blaring it out. When good news happens, I tend to get um, very quiet and, and contemplative and I need to remember not to do that. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about is that um, some people have asked me about doing tutorials. And I think what they mean by tutorials is, if you look, there are some channels that will take you step by step how to paint a strawberry, how to paint a muffin. That's one of them, I think, or a cupcake or something like that. I'm not gonna mention the person's name because it doesn't matter. Um, but just probably mentioning those two subjects probably tells you who it is. But, uh, and what they do is they teach you exactly how to paint what it is they paint. And you come out with a carbon copy of what they did, only you did it. And that's great. There is nothing wrong with that at all. And, and um, you know, any means of learning, I think, is, is, is a great way to learn. And I also think uh, it, it's, uh, it's fun. You know, it's fun. You're going to come out with a, a good result and have some um, experience with something that you didn't have experience with before. But I do not teach that way. And the reason I don't teach that way is because, probably because the way that... Um, I became a teacher in the first place. I became a special educator who taught children how to read. It's really important, especially in the world of special education, that you don't allow someone to become dependent on you. You want them to gain skills, them as well as anybody really, to gain skills so they can be independent and especially as preparing people for adulthood. So that's sort of how I think of painting in, in general, is the same sort of thing. I was to teach, for example, step by step how to paint a peony, then when you come to a peony of your own, it's not going to be the same. It doesn't give you this, the, the tools. I could teach you how to paint that peony, but that doesn't mean that I can teach you how to pe paint peonies. And the way that I do things here on this channel is really to show that it doesn't matter what you're painting, if it's a peony or it's a car or it's an apple or it's a dog or it's a face, you can really approach everything the exact same way with that systematic way of looking at a no tan or a dark, a medium, and a light, and then plugging color into those darks, mediums, and lights, co plugging color into value. And from the, when you plug color into value, you create mass. When you create masses, then you start to create volume. And when you create volume, you begin to create forms. And those forms then take on an identity that we know as suddenly something that didn't look like it was gonna be anything becomes a face or becomes an apple or becomes a car. So I don't just teach how to paint. I think what I do is, or what I try to do is teach people how to see. And that's a completely different thing than the usual way of teaching in a tutorial fashion. So I wanted to explain that. I'm not holding out. It's not that uh, I think it's, it's wrong or that I couldn't do it, but um, it's not the way I prefer to think of any subject when it comes to learning. And it's also the way that I like to learn. I like to learn in a step-by-step -step process and have someone show me just enough so that I can see how to get to the next step and then just enough so I can see how to get to the next step. So that's kind of my preference. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. And uh, remember to keep the white sheet paper white, paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.